welcome to the health talk today we are going to discuss something which we need to about an organization which was doing a wonderful job in the ministry for christ in the medical part of it the healing ministry who we are talking about which organization is this yes it's about the christian medical college and hospital velour which is celebrating its 100 years of centenary with respect to the medical schooling and to discuss this all things and to talk about more every single part of it with us we have the principal yes the very principal of christian medical college velour dr anna polimod with uh, with us who has not only done her undergraduate from there but even a postgraduate from cmc velour and right now with us she is given us a blessed time to come over and talk about the history and various aspects related to it with us in hyderabad welcome ma'am ma'am christian medical college velour has been a kind of epi center of medical ministry in india would you tell us viewers the existence how did it come into existence in india what is the main source behind the inspiration and who was the founder behind the whole concept of cmc so the christian medical college velo was started by an american missionary mm-hmm. her parents were missionaries in the south of india mm-hmm. and she had come to visit her parents she had no interest in coming in as a missionary to india mm-hmm. but she was visiting her parents and helping them out okay her name was dr ida skader uh-huh. at that time she was not a doctor she was just a young student mm-hmm. so while she was staying with her parents one night there was a knock on the door mm-hmm. and there was a young man who came in and said my wife is in labor and uh, you know she's having major problems in the delivery mm-hmm. would you be able to come and help her mm-hmm. so she said no i can't help you i'm not a doctor mm-hmm. but my father is a doctor mm-hmm. he can come and help okay so he said i can never allow a man mm-hmm. to come and help my wife with her delivery mm-hmm. so i'll have to go back without any help uh, ida was really upset mm-hmm. but uh, she had to watch him go without any help mm-hmm. soon after that there was another knock mm-hmm. and another man came and asked for the same kind of help okay and again he had to go back without a doctor going with him mm-hmm. because he wanted only a female doctor mm-hmm. and there was no female doctor available mm-hmm. after that there was a third knock and a third man also asked for help for a wife who was in labor okay and again you know there was no doctor female doctor to go with them to help mm-hmm. so dr ida was thinking about this the whole night mm-hmm. and in the morning she sent word mm-hmm. to find out about what happened to these three young women mm-hmm. and to her dismay she found that all three had died in labor oh. that night okay so because of that she felt that you know god was calling her mm-hmm. to do something for the women of south india okay because the available facilities were very poor mm-hmm. and especially there were no women doctors to help them okay so she decided to go back to the us and get trained in medicine mm-hmm. and come back and help the women mm-hmm. with their specific problems okay so actually that's what she did she went back to the us she got trained mm-hmm. in one of the best medical colleges there mm-hmm. and came back to bello mm-hmm. and she started with a one bed dispensary mm. in a very small way okay but uh, then she was able to raise mm. money to start a small hospital a okay. uh, 40 bedded hospital mm-hmm. and her entire medical work in velo started like that uh, about 9 or 10 years down the line she started a nursing school mm-hmm. and uh, about 18 years after she came to velo mm-hmm. she started the medical school oh. so so, so 1918 was 1918 was the, was the first time that the medical school was opened okay. and it was actually only for women because she was targeting women's health uh-huh. and she wanted to empower women to help the women of india yes so for the first uh, almost 30 years they admitted only women in the medical school uh-huh. uh so it was only with the independence of india there the was independence, independence of india there was men coming in and they were <laughs> okay. given a chance to train in velo wow. okay and uh, so from 1947 onwards we've had men, men coming in okay um after that by the end of 1940s early 1950s we started some post graduate courses also mm-hmm. and medicine surgery obstetrics and gynecology yes and then slowly we started super specialties mm-hmm. so cmc velo actually started many of the super specialties in the country mm-hmm. for the first time mm-hmm. so a neurosurgeon was trained in canada Mm-hmm. and started the department of neurological sciences mm-hmm. that was the first department in asia 
oh, really? of neurological sciences. Uh -huh. uh, then the first cardiothoracic open heart surgery was also done in Velo. Okay. And the first renal transplant. Uh -huh. So many of these higher specialities were started in Velo for the first time. You know, in Hyderabad, we are honored to have one of the CTVS surgeon who is a Padma Shri with us. Uh, yes. From a uh, train from CMC Velo, Dr. Gokhale, who is with us. So it's really nice that we have a strong connection between Velo and Hyderabad or, you know, uh, Telugu land. So it started with a medical schooling in 1918. The men got entry only in 1948 after 30 yes, years. Yes, yes. And so what was the numbers initially? It was like... Initially, I think it was only about 15 students that they started taking. Okay. Then they went up to 50. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a long time, there were 50 students went up in the 1960s. And it was only in 2012 that we increased the number of seats to 100. Okay. So now we have 100 students every year for the MBBS course. Wow. That's yes. a great number. 100 students. I remember I was there in 93 to 99. And yes. It was a 60, but isn't the 100 is a big gumbal and a huge crowd then? We the think 100 is a large number in Velo, hmm. but uh, many medical colleges in the country have 250 students. I know. So we are still small compared to other <laughs> colleges, but we believe in training people with high quality. I know. So we want to give personal attention to students. Hmm. We want to mentor them personally and uh, give a lot of one-to-one -one, uh, teaching. Well, how do you see the teaching in Velour? From the ages back, I am say, are you yourself a graduate from 82 till 93, I joined it and now in 2018, you were under another principal and now you yourself are a principal. How do you see the change which is happening with the technology coming in? Uh, what is your perception about it? Yeah, so technology is playing a much greater role now. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic e-learning uh, laboratory mm -hmm. and a lot of the lectures, most of the lectures are actually uploaded onto the website so students can access the lectures that they've heard in class uh -huh. uh, after class on the website. Oh really? Yeah. This is and, something and, new to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's other teaching material also for them, mm -hmm. various images and material for them to learn from on the e-learning website. Mm -hmm. But still, I think we pride ourselves in that personalized clinical teaching that I, we I do. I was about to intervene and say, I'm saying that e-learning isn't it getting them addicted to the technology more than required. Uh, what is your take as a student and, and as a teacher or a principal? So e-learning is only just an enhancing of learning techniques. Mm -hmm. So we don't have enough material there to keep them engaged for a very long time. Yes. It's only just enough material mm -hmm. to jog their memory on what they learnt in class mm -hmm. and maybe some quizzes or some things to keep them interested. Okay. So it is a limited enhancement mm -hmm. and uh, most of the teaching is in the clinics by the bedside of the patient with the senior doctor yes. present with them yes. so that they learn not only from the patient, mm -hmm. they learn from the doctor, they learn from the way he uh, behaves with the patient. Yes. You learn many skills other than just the medical skills by interacting with the doctors. Yes. How do, you, how do you find that training in CMC is different from the training from any other medical college? Something which you believe is, yes, I found it is only available in, in CMC, in, in insight into that. I mean, all medical colleges will have very good clinical teaching. Yes. But more than that, I think we try to give our students a compassionate attitude okay. towards patients. So mm -hmm. we give them a lot of, um, you know, we are teaching to think about what the patient will be feeling, the background that the patient comes from. Yes. So we spend quite a lot of time taking them into the villages mm -hmm. and to small hospitals in different parts of the country okay. to give them an understanding of what people, the backgrounds of the people who come to the big hospitals. Okay. So they're aware of their socioeconomic problems mm -hmm. and the kind of areas that they come from. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the patient comes into the clinic, they know the background of the patient, so they understand the problems that they are facing mm -hmm. more than just as a medical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So that compassionate attitude we try to inculcate. Mm -hmm. The other very important thing we try to teach them is the ethical aspect of medicine. Yeah. So what is the right way of dealing with patients? You know, how do you be fair to all patients? And, uh, you know, how not to be treat poor patients differently from those who can afford better care. Mm -hmm. So we try to, you know, uh, give them a sense of justice and mm -hmm. 
equality when they treat people uh, how do you <laughs> handle that because inequality with respect to financial condition and the social economic situation uh, status of a patient isn't it that's a reason a patient gets a different treatment because by the virtue he cannot afford a private room so uh, in in cmc are we able to maintain the same class of treatment for a different kind of patients or? so in cmc i think we do try to make sure that the treatment given is the same whether you're in a expensive ward or in an ordinary ward okay but of course you know if there are very expensive treatments mm -hmm. we may offer the poor patient you know the options that are available mm -hmm. so we'll tell them you know these are the different options available like what and uh, like so, say for chemotherapy mm -hmm. Suppose somebody comes in with leukemia. Yeah. So there are different levels of treatment you can give. Okay. And the poor patient may not be able to afford a bone marrow transplant. Yes. But may be able to go in for chemotherapy. Okay. We do get a lot of, um, you know, we do subsidize treatment for patients. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about PTP? Uh, PTP is a very good scheme that is uh, available for any poor patient, mm -hmm. but it's a limited amount of money. So it mm -hmm. won't cover the entire chemotherapy mm -hmm. treatment, mm -hmm. but we do have other funding for chemotherapy mm -hmm. and we are able to raise some money from corporates uh -huh. and on CSR. Yes. We raise money uh, through social workers mm -hmm. and uh, so we are able to subsidize some amount of expensive treatment also for poor patients. Okay. By PTP we mean? Uh, a person to person. Person to person. Person okay. to person scheme. Uh -huh. So anybody who wants to contribute towards patient care mm -hmm. can give any even a small amount of money mm -hmm. but that will go in for one patient. So you may subsidize maybe 5,000 or 10,000 for a patient mm -hmm. and uh, you know you a person can just contribute that and help one poor patient yes. through their contribution. Yes. Okay. That's a really good insight with respect <coughs> to the clinical practice which we have it and exposure. Um, now with 100 students, how do you see um, 100 years of a medical schooling? Okay. What is the future you look forward uh, with respect to our UG training? So we hope to continue to train doctors who are relevant to the needs of the country. Mm -hmm. So the needs of the country keep changing over the years, mm -hmm. but our doctors have to adapt to okay. those changing needs. So there are still a lot of poor pe people in India. We still have a lot of uh, need in the rural areas, mm -hmm. but also there are urban slums. Yes. And uh, there are different uh, diseases of the new uh, time, like the yeah. non-communicable diseases that are coming oh, up. They're on high. We need to mm -hmm. train, you know, mm -hmm. doctors who are able to handle those mm -hmm. and prevent mm -hmm. maybe non-communicable diseases through healthier lifestyles. So how is CMC reaching out to the poor <laughs> part? Or is it only through the mission hospital and how well connected are the mission hospital to CMC? So we have a network of about 100. 80 hospitals uh -huh. where our students go and serve. Mm -hmm. Once they finish their MBBS, they all work for two years in mm -hmm. that network. Mm -hmm. But uh, even while they are in college, we send them out to, for some training in these hospitals. Okay. But the ho main hospital in Velo, mm -hmm. uh, apart from that main hospital, we have smaller hospitals mm -hmm. that serve the rural populations mm -hmm. around us. Okay. And one hospital for the urban poor. Mm -hmm. So that way we serve the community also around us. Mm -hmm. And that same community is where our students go out and learn about life in the villages and yes. you know, they have. I think uh, the yeah. Lord's uh, COP programs I remember yes, yes. where we used to have the community orientation program and we used to live there yes. was one of its own kind not was yes. I think still it's continuing it's a live-in experience for the student yes. they actually live in the village yeah and yeah. Uh, eat the food that people eat there yes and mingle with the people mm -hmm. in the village mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very good but they do health surveys yes. and they do health education for the people there okay. and they become friends with the people yes so it yes. gives you a different uh, view of life mm. In the community, you know, the, the ground realities. Yes, you know, so, yes. Because I see a lot of things happening in the yeah. present day world with, you know, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and other things, and and it's very tough to understand these things unless until you go and live the yes. true yes. rural life. Yes. Uh, in my experience, I had been to one place. There's something called as Gundala Sain Pali, where there are no roads, there are no yes. electricity. Yes. So uh, such kind of places still exist in India. Absolutely. So probably we need to make sure that we reach out to those places. Absolutely. So um, that's a, a part of that uh, our students go to mission hospitals. That's 
after they graduate yes or in between also i think we had the program where the third year clinical students yes. used to go so actually now the second years and third years mm -hmm. spend 2 to 3 weeks in the villages okay. in the mission hospitals and so the while villages. they are medical students while they are medical students mm -hmm. a doctor will go from vela with them okay and they spend 2 weeks in the hospital okay and they interact with the staff there Mm -hmm. and understand the challenges of working in those hospitals mm -hmm. but also the joys yes. and uh, they go into the surgeries and watch you know the yeah. the treatment and the the with the limited resources which are yes. not there in velor i think it's nice that they get to understand it's a good exposure for them and it motivates some of them to go back and work in those hospitals later oh yes i think so, so. one of the good things that we do is every year we give an award to one of our graduates hmm. who has spent at least 25 years Mm. in rural service mm -hmm. uh you know making a difference in that place okay so we have wonderful stories of graduates who worked in different parts of the country okay. in remote places wow that's good so uh, that's about the undergraduates uh, what about the post graduate studies and and how are we seeing the changes which are coming because in the present day world where the people are looking only for you know specialist treatment yes so i believe we have a huge number of post graduates which come every year yeah we have about 36 uh, post graduate programs mm -hmm. uh, in various broad specialties like medicine surgery mm -hmm. obstetrics geriatrics mm -hmm. and we have about 192 Post graduates coming in for those courses. That's a huge yeah, number. Yeah, it's a huge number, and all our training is very hands-on. Mm -hmm. So from day one, they go into the wards mm -hmm. and become a part of the team. Yes, and they learn from the seniors working alongside them. Mm -hmm. So that is the post graduate broad specialties. Okay. Then we have about twenty-one higher specialty courses. Like so one ninety-two is a post graduate, and twenty-one is a higher. Twenty-one courses with sixty-two students. Oh my God! Yeah, so two hundred and fifty plus. Yes. Uh, post graduate and super specialist. Yes, yes. That's really nice. Yeah, and yeah, it's good. It's good. They are uh, one of the big workforce in the hospital. Yes. But their training is very hands-on. Mm -hmm. So by the time they finish, mm -hmm. they're very competent. trainees okay yeah. okay now that's really nice to know as i was telling you that we have got dr gokhale with us here and yes. now dr edwin ravi kumar an old alumnus from velor is also in the city of hyderabad so we see that super specialists coming so yes. that's really nice to know about it and um how has been the journey of uh, ug and pg now because uh, the era is changing the e learning is there so do we by any chance do you see as a professor of a pathology do you see that there is a change in the attitude of the doctors towards a patient or do you think that we are able to maintain that we are giving them a touch of humanity to our students uh, what is yeah, your personal I, take I, on i like to believe that we are still continuing to do that uh -huh. i'm sure technology does make a difference like people say if the doctor is typing at a computer yeah. in the opd mm -hmm. they have less time to look at the patient yeah to yeah. make eye contact yes you know so that is a challenge mm -hmm. we have to be conscious of that and mm -hmm. we try to make our doctors conscious of that mm -hmm. in the wards we still use paper records uh -huh. so they when they're next to the patient they are not looking at a computer <laughs> but once they go to the nurse station and they have to enter the records that has to be into that a computer be, but understand. we encourage them to what spend time what about the opd have we changed the opd so the o, like? yeah the opds have computers uh -huh. so the all the laboratory tests and the x rays are available on computers mm. so they have to so look into not, the computer uh, so have you made mm. our opd the paperless or the still? yeah it is paperless now all mm. the records are uh, electronic uh -huh. so the patients record i mean they still have charts uh -huh. but a lot of the work majority is now online yeah, and I pharmacy think. ordering also is online mm -hmm. so we are trying to go paperless yeah i think that's a future yeah, and, and the future need yeah. of the hour so i <laughs> yes, think yes. we don't have a choice but yes, to yes. though you know i personally i find uh, that human touch is missing yes uh, last to last month i had an opportunity to work in Uh, you know assam in tejpur and everything is paperless out there but then i thought i was very much busy in putting the data into the computer that is the problem that is the problem uh -huh. yes so that we lose that uh, eye to eye contact yes. holding the pulse of the hand yes. for some time so technology i believe is a good servant and a bad master so it's yes. a 
but we need to kind of go hand in hand. So, um, 100 years centenary celebrations. The CMC has been doing about it. I think there are right from the start of this year, we have been having the programs. Yes, we've uh, been having yes various services, Thanksgiving services. Mm -hmm. And we've had some luminary lectures. Yes. So, we had some outstanding people from the country mm -hmm. coming to give lectures so that we just open our eyes to things outside the institution, yes. non-medical issues. Mm -hmm. So we had Sri Beswada Wilson coming in mm -hmm. and uh, he had actually got the Magsasay Award also. Okay. And um, he talked about, you know, his battle against the manual scavenging. Okay. He comes from that community, mm -hmm. but he's uh, done some very powerful work against manual scavenging. Okay. So he gave the first lecture. Then we had Romulus uh, Whittaker, okay. who's working with the uh, uh, snake park. He's developed a snake park and a crocodile park. Mm -hmm. And then he's developed the Irula community uh -huh. that actually used to be snake catchers. Mm -hmm. But now he's encouraging them to actually catch the snakes only for the venom. So they've got a big, uh, you know, venom. Venom uh, less snakes. Uh, no, they, they actually extract the venom to make anti-venom. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that's required. So they're developing anti-venom mm -hmm. for the country. Mm -hmm. So he gave a very good uh, luminary lecture. Wow. And then we had a luminary lecture by P. Sainath, a famous journalist. Okay. And then, of course, we had the president coming in for the inauguration. Okay. The president of the country came in. Okay. And at the same time, Honorable governor of the Mr. state. Mr. Ramnath Kovin, sir? Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah, Sri Ramnath Gon with his wife uh -huh. and the governor of the state had also come okay. and uh, the deputy uh, chairman of the Rajya Sabha, mm -hmm. Professor P.J. Kurian, mm -hmm. he had also come. So, we had a big gala function. That's really nice yes. to hear that. I must say the CMC's uh, recognition at various platforms. Yes, yes, and yes. I think even you got some award also uh, by uh, Mr. Uh, Prakash Javadekar. Uh, yes, yeah. So, in the national rankings, you know, by God's grace, we stay within the top two, three okay. ranks. Yes. And even in the national ranking, we came third. Mm -hmm. We were the top private institution, but mm -hmm. in the national ranking, we were third. No, so, that's what I believe. Say, uh, we were having, say, this. Uh, I believe you, you've been giving that the best medical college award for the social responsibility in coming up forum in Hyderabad in 26th August also. Yes. So I believe nobody has uh, two thoughts regarding the social responsibility which CMC has towards the, to the Indian people. Yes. So we feel very honored to be a part of CMC and in Thank Hyderabad, um, if you know it, we have almost a couple of hundreds of CMCites working. Yes. So we have a strong connection with Velour and we, yes. we like renewing our ties with Velour. Yes. by having uh, various interactions. So, um, how has CMC been impacted by involvement from the uh, Telugu people? So, uh, do we have anybody presently working from our side? Or? I'm sure there are a lot of doctors from... Uh, you have a regular intake uh, the, from yes. the CSI. Yeah, so there are a lot of churches from Andhra that are sending students for training mm -hmm. and postgraduates also, then many of them stay on and then they come back to your state. Yes. So that is what I would say we contribute and you contribute. Yes. So people from your state are coming to Velour training and then coming back and contributing in your, you know, to the healthcare here. Mm -hmm. So both in the big hospitals in the city and in the mission hospitals in the rural areas. Yes. So I would say and so very committed doctors coming back from CMC and working here. Mm -hmm. So that I, I guess is our contribution to you yes. and uh, your contribution also to the Absolutely. To the I think the, the extended arm of CMC in Chitur which has come up yes. is connects the Telugu land very much yes, back very. to... That is now yes. very close to our heart. Yes. yes and so. the ho that hospital is expanding very quickly Okay. and uh, doing well. Lots of specialities and starting training programs there. Some allied health training programs have been started. Ma'am, um, it's been an honor and lovely time when I was there in CMC from 93 to 99. And I really believe the ones who get opportunity to do their post-graduation and any kind of interaction there. What is your uh, point, uh, the welcome to the ones who have done the post-graduation somewhere else, but they would want to have a taste of CMC and experience of CMC. So how to do approach and, and, and who all are welcome for that? 
um, is there something like that is there where the yeah. outsiders can come in and work and yes. have the experience yeah so there are lots of opportunities for you even if you've not done a postgraduate in Bella mm -hmm. so we have many fellowship courses okay. actually close to 65 fellowship courses really? in various different specialities mm -hmm. so if you've done gastroenterology you can train in you know complex scopy procedures mm -hmm. or if you've trained in uh, say neural neurosurgery mm -hmm. you can come and train in very specific neurosurgical fields okay you know or if you've done ENT you can come and train in all the different specialities of ENT okay. so those fellowship courses are one to two years mm -hmm. you do the entrance exam and get in and you have a paid job Mm -hmm. and in-house training, working okay. and training. Uh, and these fellowship are not the MCI recognized, uh, just yeah, to understand Those are not that? MCI recognized, mm -hmm. many of them are university recognized. Okay. So, you know, they're all available on the list is available on our website, mm -hmm. but anybody can apply for those fellowship courses. And if you're not interested in a fellowship, you simply want to come and work for a year. Mm -hmm. You can apply to departments, often they have positions okay. where you can come for a short time of training or working mm -hmm. and again if you don't want to even come for that much time you just want to spend a month mm -hmm. as an observer mm -hmm. you're still welcome to apply and many of the departments are happy to take you in okay. as an observer and you can just you know get an exposure okay to the and, and who do they, how do they approach and how do they, who do they address yeah, so the they can write either to the principal or the medical superintendent okay and ask for a observership period in any particular department or any speciality of that department. Um, if I can elaborate on that point because I believe a couple of our viewers will be doctors and all. So do they get paid for it or do they have to pay for this either way? Yeah, for the observership they have to pay, uh, there's a sum, there's a small sum. Uh -huh. But if they're coming into work, they'll definitely be paid and given some kind of accommodation also. Okay, okay, that's a really uh, good look inside into it. So what's the future we are looking forward? 100 years <coughs> we have done, uh, by the grace of God, a glorious past from 15 medical students to 100, from couple of few uh, PG seats to right now 100, 250 plus PG and the super specialty. So where do you look as a principal and another few years uh, uh, where we are heading towards? Yeah, so our institution has three dimensions. Mm -hmm. There's the healthcare service, yes. there's the education, and mm -hmm. there's the research. Mm -hmm. So we're growing in all these aspects. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the next 100 years, we'll be looking at all three aspects. Mm -hmm. So in healthcare, actually, for now, we're building a new campus with about 1,500 beds, mainly uh, specialities, okay. giving importance to specialities and also to trauma care. Okay. Because now there are a lot more accidents, yes. so we have you know advanced trauma care in the new campus. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, in on the medical side, you know on the education side, we are constantly increasing the number of courses that we have, yes. the number of seats. So recently, we've you know even in the last five years, we've started several new courses. Uh -huh. Some of them, very few centers in the country have those courses. Some courses are not there in any other uh, center in the uh -huh. country. So one of those is hand surgery. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's an old speciality in CMC, Dr. Paul, Paul Brand, Brand yes. did the whole thing. So, yeah. we have, currently we have the only MCH in hand surgery in the country. MCH in hand surgery, I think that's <coughs> yes. a new insight yeah. for somebody yeah. like me yeah. also. So, that's really nice. Yeah. And on the research side, yes, we're constantly uh, expanding our research uh, interests. Mm -hmm. And we have dedicated laboratories only for research mm -hmm. and a um, lot of PhD students. So, people can come and do PhD also in Velo if they're interested in research training. I think that's a wonderful insight which we have got till now regarding the various educational aspects and the courses which are available. I think the viewers will be blessed by this uh, interview to get to know about CMC from you and uh, if, if with your permission probably we can scroll your email also. So if any one of the uh, students or the doctors are interested in connecting sure. in any way sure. uh, with, with CMC then there can be stronger bonds between Velour and Hyderabad and, and Telangana. Absolutely and we welcome uh, you know any young doctor who's interested in training in Velour mm -hmm. to apply to us and there are lots of opportunities, either as formal training or just informally coming in and working or as observers, we welcome you to 
come to CMC. Ma'am, we are really thankful for taking your precious time out. You were here for this ICMD meet and you could still come and take time, your uh, important time out for us. My and pleasure, for interview. my pleasure. Um, on the behalf of Calvary TV, uh, we are uh, we're thankful for your blessed time and we will be reaching out to you. Our viewers will be blessed to, to reach out to you where there can be more fruitful time and the you know connection between uh, Hyderabad and uh, CMC of Valor. And uh, thanks a lot uh, for coming and, and for this interview. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Uh, I'm very sure you all have been benefited from this wonderful interview and can look forward to connect directly with CMC, whether it's uh, your uh, need with respect to your physical illness or need with respect to your uh, you know growth in the education field where you want to get connected with CMC if you are a doctor yourself or a nurse or any uh, kind of uh, subsidiary of medical you know system so uh, be in touch with us especially with our channel and make sure you be a blessing to Christ by watching this channel as well as working and being an excellent you know uh, image of Christ in whatever work you do keep watching us May God bless you. Catch you same time on this uh, channel with another topic related to your health. Uh, goodbye. Take care.